If you can, just maybe just tell me a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit of your history, what you think would be helpful to me to know about you and, and how you are, where you're at now. Okay. Um, my name is Andrew Wilson. Um, I live in Dundee on the east coast of Scotland, um, which is a small city, I'd call it. Um, um, I, was, I was a Christian as a child and as a teenager, and I got to the point where I uh, felt called to the ministry. Um, and as it was during university, my university time that I felt called to ministry and I, uh, studied the Bible and so on and went, got, got interviewed for, for Divinity University and I got accepted for Divinity University and then went through all the processes that the church goes through to interview people who want to be a minister. Um, and which involved a number of interviews, it involved a number of sponsors, and then it involved a final three-day interview, which involved things like taking a committee meeting, giving a sermon, all that kind of thing. Um, and at the end of that process, the church basically said to me, they think I had too many doubts. So I'll give them their due for realising before I did <laughs> that, uh, that I had doubts. Um, and since then, basically, um, I think my beliefs has fallen away, and I've only felt comfortable with the term atheism, atheism in the last four or five years, I think. Um, um, and it basically down to the amount of evidence that I see for, for a God, I think, is, is the reason I would say I'm an atheist. Doubts about God is why you're an atheist, is that what you said? Um, doubts about the existence of a God, I, I don't... Um, not not just a god, but anything, anything, any claims of something outside of nature. I think um, I'm not saying there isn't anything outside of nature, but I don't, um, you know, a supernatural kind of thing or a god uh -huh. or something like that. Um, but I just don't see evidence of it. Okay. Now, uh, the church that you are doing this with is, is it a specific church denomination or? Um... It, it's Church of Scotland, Presbyterian uh, Church. Uh, I was I was a member of. All right, and so would you describe yourself then um, as an atheist or as an agnostic? And also, the people I've interviewed already, um, some of them have given me different terms to what they would describe themselves. For example, one of them called himself a rational skeptic. Um, do you have anything like that? And then also to of you know either atheist or agnostic. Well, I would say. <sighs> I like to think I'm a skeptic, um, which kind of, in other words, I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily take everything at face value, and that's kind of the core of how I approach life, I think. And from that, I think my atheism is a result of that. Um, but also, I don't see atheism and agnosticism as different. Well, they're different things. They're answers to different questions. So I, I see myself as both atheist and agnostic because. Uh, an atheist is someone who doesn't have a belief in God, whereas agnostic answers is more about knowledge and whether we can have knowledge for definite. So I would call myself agnostic in the sense that um, I I can't say for definite that there is no God. I mean, I you know I can't, and I don't think anyone who's rational can say absolutely one hundred percent there is a God. At least I don't think I, uh, you might disagree. I don't know. <laughs> um, do you see the difference? You see the difference. I'm making? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. So, um, atheist in that you don't believe in God, and then agnostic in that you can't say for sure. So, and yes. some people say, well, I'm agnostic because I don't know, I'm open to it. And you're saying, well, I'm more hardline atheist in that I really do uh, not believe there's a God. But yes, um, I well, will leave I open as... the opportunity or the possibility of, it, of, of me possibly well, being wrong. Yeah, I see, I see them as answers to different questions, really. Um, atheism is just basically the answer to the question, do you, do you have a belief in God? If you answer no to that, then you're an atheist. <laughs> as, as that's, my, that's how I see it. And agnosticism answers a totally different question. And it just, it's just asking the question, you know, um, can you know such a thing as a God exists, basically? Um, and I, I'm, my answer to that question is no, I can't say. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure if we can have that knowledge or if we can say for definite. 
that there is or there isn't a god, basically. Okay. And sorry if that's compl- sorry if that's complicated, but <laughs> no, that's good and it's, it's very enlightening because I, I hear I hear lots of different um, answers to this and, and views of of agnostic, um, especially um, in talking, you know, so, doing these interviews. So it's it's. I think, some, I think some people see agnosticism as some sort of in between. Right. And I don't see I don't see it like that at all. That's, they're two they're two different things as far as I'm concerned. But yeah. okay. <laughs> Andrew, when did you become uh, atheist? I don't know if it's a sense of becoming an atheist. I think um, I realized that I didn't have a belief in God or that I was comfortable with, that I accepted that I didn't have a belief in God about probably somewhere between five and ten years ago. I can't, I can't, there's not a time I can say that's definitely, you know, this is the point at which I did not believe in God. Mm-hmm. I think it was a, it was a slow realization rather than, rather than a, a kind of... Um, um, like Paul on the road to uh, Gethsemane moment, you know, it wasn't that. It was there wasn't any. Uh, there wasn't anything like that. Okay. Damascus, so not Gethsemane, just Damascus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you consider yourself a former Christian or other religion? I used to be a Christian. If that answers it, I certainly wouldn't. I'm not. It's not something I hide or you know. I don't. I don't pretend I wasn't ever a Christian. I, I was a Christian. Right. Um, so if someone answers me, was did I used to be a Christian? Then yes, I was. I did just. To... Do you do you feel, Andrew, that it was um, you were born in this church and therefore you were part of this church type of uh, Christian, or did you um, at one point like really believe uh, Jesus Christ was Son of God? Jesus Christ died for our sins, um, putting your faith in Him, uh, that type of. You know, actually believing being a Christian. Um, a bit of both, really. I mean, I was I was born into that church, um, but I did go through a process of accepting Jesus into my life. I went through confirmation, and and I chose to go through confirmation. In fact, I went through it a bit earlier than most people. I went through it about fourteen, and most people go through it about sixteen or eighteen because I said I wanted to do it. Yes, I, yes, I grew up in that church, but I also had you had a salvation experience. Uh, uh, so, uh, yes. Not an instant moment, but yes, I had a, I had a, probably over a period of a few months. Okay. Why do you think you don't believe in God? As I said before, I think the evidence for it, I don't see any any real evidence for, for such a, a being. It's like people people who, who I talk to who are Christian sort of point to, oh, isn't the word world beautiful and, and everything, and that seems so perfect for us. <laughs> but the same, but, but, but you just have to take a look at the world and say, well, you know, you have to account for uh, bone cancer in babies as well. You know, you have to, you can't just take the nice things. You have to look at the whole picture. You can't just, you can't use that as an argument, I don't think. So using, you know, lingo and stuff, it's it wasn't a crisis of belief. It wasn't something happened in your life. It wasn't something said something to you or you read this provocative book or or something like that. It was just over time, it was this, Wait a minute! This doesn't make sense, and I, I don't see that, and I, I hear you. Yeah, but I it, was don't... A, it was a number of things. I mean, I suppose um, my degree at university was in biochemistry, which uh, I suppose started me questioning about you know we looked at evolution and things, and and that made me start questioning things like the the Genesis account of creation and you know Noah's Ark, and then that made me start questioning Noah's Ark and you know the actual. The, the practicalities of Noah's Ark are just don't seem even remotely possible. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't, and I'm not sure. I don't know where you stand on it. I don't know whether you're a literal kind of creationist or whether you're. A, um, I'm not sure where you stand, but um, I, I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't see how something a literal translation like that could be real. <laughs> mm-hmm. See what I mean? What would you say to God believers, theists out there? I, I've talked to some. People mm-hmm. who are who consider themselves atheists, who, ah, eh, whatever you want to do, it's fine. Uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother you. I, you know, I've heard some people, hey, it's like all roads lead to Rome, all roads lead to heaven. If you're Buddhist, be a good Buddhist. If you're Christian, be a good Christian. Mm-hmm. Obviously, therefore, if you're an atheist, be a good atheist. And I've talked to some people who stop it right now, walk away, save yourself, free yourself. Uh, you know. So, what um, would you say to? 
um, if if a theist listened to this right now, what would you personally say to them? I, I'm perfectly happy for people to have their own beliefs. I don't. I'm not. Um, I'm not saying people should leave church at all. Um, I think the only time I, I have a an issue with religion is um, if they're trying to impose their particular moral values on the rest of of the the country. Um, it's fine for people to have their own beliefs, and I've got no problem with that at all. Um, but I believe when it comes to the public square, um, laws should be based on what we can what we can see and what what evidence we have for things, rather than than necessarily just on what people believe. I mean, everyone's got everyone's got a right to have their input into a democracy. That's absolutely, and and everyone has the right to do that. Um, but I think. Issues like gay marriage and so on. If, if you don't believe in gay marriage, my, my opinion view don't don't marry someone of the same gender. I think, um, but I, I'm not I, I'm not comfortable with the idea of of someone imposing that value on other people. Um, you know, if two if two if two people are in love and want to get married, that's fine in my book. And if you if, if people have the belief that it's wrong, then I would say, I say to them, don't don't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's that's you know. Um, Quick clarification on that. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good point, I, and it's making me think of something that I'd like to learn from you. Now, mm-hmm. are you talking about just in regards to the laws of a country, what you can and can't do, what is right and wrong, or do you mean uh, in regards to uh, proselytizing, evangelizing, converting? I've got no problem with people talking about their views and t- and, and discussing them and. and trying to change people's minds and so on, that's not a problem. I think in terms, it's more in terms of the law, I think, um, and I think I'm probably, I'm probably in more agreement with the libertarians on this, and the, the, the government, the less, the less the government imposes particular views mm-hmm. on, on society, the, the better in some ways. So as far as, like, so, the, allowing people, allowing gay marriage is allowing the most freedom for the most people, and if you don't agree with gay marriage, then don't, don't 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 um and it don't uh, be the officiator at a gay marriage or don't get married to someone of the same gender basically that's my i think that's my opinion really is okay um you know yeah so in regards to this and using your brought up example of gay marriage is if uh, someone for religious beliefs does not agree with gay marriage then don't perform gay marriages maybe talk to people about why you don't agree with gay marriage yeah. don't get married gay yourself but yeah, don't, don't require you, it a country law that you cannot be married and gay. That's what you're saying yeah, with that point? Basically, yeah, okay. basically. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy for a church, for instance, a particular church to say, well, we're not going to do gay marriages, and that's fine. That's their belief. You know, okay. Um, you know, the reason, um, okay, good. The reason why I was, I was asking that, and, and you brought it up and me thinking of it, is there are some people that have a problem with people who are religious trying to convert others. And, um, and think of it as you know almost like a hate thing. And what I just wanted to ask you, there's no obviously concern here, but um, you might have met people who are like this, that um, if you truly believe that we should be able to believe like we want without forcing it, obviously, and not making yeah. people, I would think we would want people who are religious to try to, you know, convert because that shows that we are truly an open society and we can have dialogue and discussions and talk to people um because i you know i understand people who are maybe mad and upset and don't believe it but i don't understand uh, making it illegal um because i think you know with with your views on science and and being able to believe what i want to believe and, and such like uh, that we would want people you're maybe not going to do it well you're probably not going to convert you know you in particular but you uh, should be able to at least try because if they don't, then what are they believing in at all? You know, what what yeah, do I mean, any I'm, of us I'm, believe if we can't discuss? Uh, I'm absolutely, I'm totally, that's fine. And if people are hanging signs up, say, their churches and they're having discussion groups and they're debating online and all that sort of stuff, I've got no problem with that whatsoever. I'm, I'm up for a good debate myself. <laughs> um, uh, and that's not a problem. Um, again, the only issue is that when it comes to the point of, of uh, the public square, the public, like, Okay. That's the that's the only place I have an issue with it because uh, either I think there's there's two ways to deal with it in the in the public square um, on taxpayers' land. I think is where um, you either have to 
allow everyone uh, space in the public square, or you just say, do you know what, as far as religion goes, you can bring your own beliefs to the political process, but we have to get on with make the business of making law and, and, and carrying out judgments and all that sort of the rest of it. Um, but we need to kind of leave the proselytising at home when, we, when we're in that, that particular situation, I think. You can bring your own personal views, but I think having... I think, you know, I'm trying to think of an example. Things like Ten Commandments on the lawn of a courthouse and things like that. Um, if you allow that, I think you probably have to allow other religions to do the same thing, or not at all. And it, 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 For me, the best option on the public, in the public square is to sort of have a clean slate really and, and, and say well let's leave let's leave the proselytising at home um, if we're voting on a particular topic bring your religious belief by all means but we're not here to proselytise we're here to make law and we're here to, to kind of try to do what's best for the country if you see what I mean okay yeah the question is are you mad at God um, do you no no <laughs> my simple, No. that's my simple answer to okay it. Uh, yeah <laughs> Do you hate the Christian God at all? Meaning, do you have a problem? And let's put it this way. Um, you probably don't have a problem with the Christian God per se, but let me ask you this way. Do you, when you hear of people talking about the God of the Bible and Christianity, does that thought um, cause anger in your mind to think of this being you don't believe in and what he stands for? Because I've met some people who don't care, and I've met some people who... Uh, I mean, it 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 offends them when they hear people say "God bless you," you know that sort of thing. Oh no, that's no, that's not offend me at all. Um, I, I think, um, I don't know what's the saying. Um, uh, the, so yes, I'm not um, I'm not mad at God. I'm mad at the fan club. I think it was the thing to say, <laughs> and it's not, um, um, and it's just not the whole fan club, of course. But um, I think. It, if, if we're having, if I'm in the middle of a debate with someone That's about awesome. about whatever, um, uh, whether it's their, uh, whether it's about evolution or whether it's about whatever, if it's to do with religion, um, I occasionally find myself I put a lot of thought into an answer and uh, look up the science and look up, uh, do a lot, do a bit of research and answer to the best of my ability, and then someone just comes back and says, "Ah, oh, well, it says in Deuteronomy such and such." And I'm thinking, oh, can I? I've put a lot of thought into this debate. Could you put the same amount of thought and not just quote a Bible passage? You know what I mean? Um, so I, I find someone just for some people in a debate, it's sort of it's sort of putting the shutters down. It's like they'll, they'll they'll just quote a Bible passage in order to put the shutters down and leave it at that and end the debate really, and that that annoys me a little bit. So you're talking to someone, you're maybe debating truth or not and, and Christianity uh, versus atheism, and you're saying something and they throw out a super spiritual answer not to yeah. persuade or just to cut cut off discussion entirely. It's, it's either, I don't know whether they're trying to cut the discussion off or if they're trying to reinforce their own views or I, I, can't, I don't know the psychology of it, but mm -hmm. um, it's like they've just thrown that in there Yeah, and it's not, it's not contributing to the debate at all. Uh, you know, debates about learning. It's not. It's not just about one side shouting at the other and vice versa. Right. It should be about exchange of ideas. And if someone just throws a Bible passage in, it just it, it, it just ends the debate. Really, you can't go anywhere with that. If you see what I mean. Yeah. To me personally, would you say <laughs> I should stop believing in God or I should stay the way I am? Um, that's entirely up to you. <laughs> okay. Um, you've come to the conclusions you've come to based on what evidence you see and I've come to the conclusions that I have based on what I see and um, the only thing that, that could possibly change your mind is having a debate and maybe seeing it from someone else's point of view um, I can't force you not to believe just the same as I can't be forced to believe in something it's not, belief isn't a choice It's if you know what I mean Right. it's something you come to yourself it's not uh, it's not assessing things yourself you don't you can't I don't know I, I, I mean suppose some people maybe could be persuaded just to believe just because someone else does but I don't that's not coming to it rationally <laughs> I don't think have you ever and or do you currently read the Bible or any other religious books um, I yes I do occasionally read the Bible um, 
I think most most atheists I know do occasionally read the Bible. Um, in fact, I mean, I, I've set up a website that where people can vote on a Bible. It gives you a random Bible verse, and you get to get to vote on whether it's literal or metaphorical. It's a bit of a gimmick, really, but um, I just thought it might be useful to to tote up the answers and see what see what um, see what the conclusions are for different verses. Plus, it asks you your religion as well, so um, it'd be interesting to see what different different religions answer on different verses. But um, so, I, I, this, yeah, the, the, the Bible's important from a cultural point of view, historically. So, yes, I do occasionally read it. Well, what's that website? Uh, oh, it's at versevote.com. Verse about? Verse vote, sorry, V-O-T-E, as in you can vote on verses, basically. Versevote.com. Yeah. Interesting. I just, I, again, in debates, I quite often come across... But it stemmed from the point I was making before about people just throwing in a Bible verse um, and I thought well people take that literally but then some people don't take that verse literally what, so what's the you know, why do some people take it literally and why do some people take it metaphorically and um, I just thought it'd be it'd be nice just to put that out there and people and see see what the result is it mm-hmm. might be meaningless it might be meaningless of course but you know <laughs> um I yeah, it's a, it's a different way of, of gathering insight. That's pretty uh, pretty interesting. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you read the the Bible th- uh, through previously. Yes. <clears throat> and so you'll read the Bible occasionally for the the sake of debates and and topics, but you don't regularly read the Bible or any other religious books at all. Well, I'll occasionally read works by other people who are religious, and um, particularly if it's involving some kind of debate. Um, and I'll occasionally I'll read. I, I mean, I no longer read the Bible right through, <laughs> um, but I do read relevant verses and read around it um, and and see what because people always bring up the oh you've got to read it in context. So I'll read the verse again and I'll read the whole chapter and maybe look at what the different historical views on that verse are and so on. Okay. Do you read Do you read a lot of books about uh, atheism or doubt in God or anything like that? I've read one or two. I mean, I've read the usual uh, uh, God is not great and all that. Um, but I don't regularly read books about atheism um, as such. I read books on a sort of lots of different topics, really. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I think once you realise you don't believe in God, it's not. it doesn't become... Well, certainly maybe it does for some people, but not for me. It's not a big thing. I mean, I, I take part in debates online and things, but... I, it doesn't define you in the same way that, say, being a Christian would define you, if you know what I mean. Presumably, as a Christian, it, it shapes your life and so on. Whereas being an atheist, it's not something I go out and... I don't, I don't wear t-shirts saying I'm an atheist or anything. Uh-huh. Um, I, don't, I, don't not, I don't proselytize my atheism, if, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Uh, okay. If you could recommend any one book, what would it be? Oh... <sighs> It would depend on what you... I mean, most of the debates that I seem to take part on online are to do with evolution. A lot of Christians I know accept evolution and uh, some don't. Um, For those that doubt evolution, I would say read either Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene or read his um, book, The Greatest Show on Earth. Um, Or there's another book called Why Evolution is True by Richard Coyne. uh, Sorry, Jerry Coyne. The, the most debates I have with people who don't believe in evolution, most of them don't seem to understand how evolution works. They've 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 got they've misunderstood it or they've been told wrongly, um, and that always seems evolution for some reason seems to be the biggest sticking point. I don't know why, but um, it always seems to be the thing that comes up most often when when debating with theists. Maybe it's just because I happen to come across the sort of six thousand year six day creationists, you know. <laughs> Yeah, those guys are really crazy, aren't they? Um, well, they're kind of ignoring a lot of science, I think. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I don't know. Where, where do you stand on that? Maybe you don't want to go into that. Where do you, where where would you put yourself in, on those on that scale? Uh, in regards to creation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a literal six day creation guy. Right. Okay. Maybe we can have a debate some other time then. <laughs> <laughs> cool. 
Sounds good. Um, have you ever heard of presuppositional apologetics? Yes. Well familiar with it? Uh, yeah, fairly familiar. I watched the, I mean, um, I've come across a few of them on Twitter, and then there was the debate between uh, Cy Ten Bruggen and Cat. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. And Matt Delaney? And Matt, Matt, Matt Delaney, yeah. Wow, that's pretty. Uh... Worldwide famous. That's interesting. I've heard a couple people mention that. So that's neat. Okay. Um, if it's okay with you, um, I'd like to read a, a Bible passage. It's four verses. It's about uh-huh. presuppositional apologetics, and I just want to get your opinion on what you think of it. And do you agree okay. or disagree, or what would you say about it? Right. Um, and if you've, if you're, since you're familiar with Psy and you're familiar with presuppositional apologetics, you've probably heard this passage before. It's Romans chapter one, verses eighteen through twenty-one, okay. and the verses say, "For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them." For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Yeah, um, I'm quoting the Bible, I was like, well, Firstly, you have to demonstrate the Bible is true, um, and then you have to demonstrate that, like that a God exists. And the, the, the whole idea that we already know God in our hearts is I don't I don't accept that. Uh, I don't right. see I don't see I don't see the evidence for that. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just think the, that stance that God exists, whether you know it or not, is is kind of just stomping your feet and saying you're not listening. You're not, you know, it's just I. I there's, you can't debate with that. If someone just says that and believes that, then fine. But I, you can't have a, I can't have a debate with someone who says that because there's nowhere to go with that. You can't. You can't. Because because basically by just presupposing that a god exists and that he created the world in six days, there's nowhere. There's no room for debate. Mm-hmm. I think. You mentioned. I just thought this up. You just mentioned that. Um, in order to accept this passage, you have to first demonstrate the Bible is true, which I would yeah. actually agree with you on it. But then you said, then you have to prove God is true. And I was just wondering what you well, thought. Prove, well, you have to prove, you have to demonstrate that God exists. God exists, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was just thinking about that because um, something I thought that was kind of interesting in regards to that is the Bible never, I guess I could see how you would answer this anyways, but the God, uh, the Bible never attempts to prove God exists. It's just, okay. uh, it's, it just, it just assumes God exists and it assumes the readers acknowledge that. And I guess, I guess you, everyone does that with their type of book and you would, you all have, a, you know, everyone has assumptions in regards to who their potential reading audience is. Um, so would you just simply say then that it, it, they're just accepting it as, as true and Absolutely. therefore they're not, they're not proving it to be true? Yeah, they're just it's, a, it's an acceptance, and it's on it's on faith, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah. That, if that's what they if they make that assumption to start with, then that's fine. But mm-hmm. I I don't necessarily make that assumption when I read the Bible, and not not a lot of people I know do, um, except people who are already Christian. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything in the Bible that you strongly disagree with, and and all of the above does not count here as an answer? No. Um, is there is there like one one passage or one story or chapter and verse that would be your top number one? This one you always remember every time. This is the most outlandish, most stupid, most proving that God is not love or God doesn't exist. Any verses like that that come to your mind? It's more in some ways what's missing. Take the Ten Commandments, for instance. There's nothing in there about slavery or about child abuse, or um, but yet the first four commandments are all about worshiping a god um, and making sure you keep the Sabbath present and don't worship any other gods and always have God before anyone else and all the rest of it. And 
for me, if someone is, if God really is a God and is is completely um, is all powerful and all knowing, that seems the first four commandments seem to be from someone who's very insecure. <laughs> to put it mildly, I think. And so I think what's missing is that it's what's missing from the Ten Commandments. I think is what 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 I find most worrying, okay. especially when you look at other passages of the Bible where. Um, not only is things like slavery condoned, but it actually tells you how hard you're like to hit your slaves and things, and that that does that, that bothers me. Okay. Do you ever debate religion or the existence of God with people? It sounds like you said you do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pretty often, or occasionally, or when someone um, comes by, or it's it's most often on Twitter. Um, it probably happens. I probably get involved in a big debate, like you know, I, that I'm sitting there for two, three hours. <laughs> um, probably, it's probably about once a month or something that happens. I would say. Once a month, where you do what? Where, where I basically end up sitting for two or three hours, taking the arguments through and and you know actually going through a big long debate with someone. Um, oh, kind of like the Cy and Matt thing you're talking about, or more? Uh, yeah, well, personal? it's more online. It's more Twitter, but it's, oh, okay. um, you know, it's more. Uh, uh, or occasionally YouTube, but I kind of avoid YouTube because the comments are a bit ridiculous on YouTube. But um, uh, it's more—it's mostly on Twitter. Like a chat debate kind of a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's more a—it's um, not—it's not like a video thing or an audio thing. It's yeah. just on Twitter, back back and forth, um, which I quite like because it helps you. The thing I like about Twitter is it helps you really make your ideas concise. But that's. Um, People like different ways of debating. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. have Christians ever tried talking to you about becoming a Christian? Do they have have Christians tried to share the gospel with you, um, help you understand um, who Jesus truly is and your need for Him in your life, things like that? Um, occasionally, yes. Okay, it's not a more often than not or anything like that it's like it's, a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a regular thing not a regular not thing a, okay no. I mean very occasionally I'll get maybe a Jehovah's Witness around the door or something like that um, but it doesn't happen that often but it does happen occasionally do you consider yourself open to the existence of God of a God it's a possibility what would make it a possibility what, what would you think in your mind thinking right now what would have to happen for you to say, oh, okay, maybe God does exist? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. <laughs> if I'm honest, I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, it's difficult to think what uh, what would. Count. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One more question. Mm-hmm. If you discovered that Christianity was was true, would you believe it and become a Christian? If it was true, um, in what sense? Do you mean do you mean that <clears throat> the base ten, the basic tenets of Christianity and uh, that Jesus existed and was the Son of God and was sacrificed that that, that the whole thing? Yes. If it was demonstrated to be true, then I wouldn't have any option other than to believe it. I think. But again, as I said before, I'm not entirely sure what would count as evidence. That's, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. If it was demonstrated to be true, you wouldn't have an option but to believe. But then back to the previous question, you uh, don't necessarily know what it would, what would fully um, uh, account for demonstrating it to be true. Yeah. Okay. Because I've, I've I've talked to some people that said even if I knew it was true I still wouldn't because da 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 and you know and then it's some sometimes usually and occasionally it's a an anger thing or a hatred you know type thing for Christianity oh. and and uh, so I didn't know if, if you were like that so you're open to it you don't necessarily know what it would take to prove it in your mind yeah. because it just it, it would be like me trying to or are you trying to prove um, the existence of, I guess, Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny uh, or the Tooth yeah, Fairy? Uh, I don't know. Yes, I don't know. I don't know what would um, that uh, the, the sort of the, the, the 
the clever and in inverted commas answer I've heard is, well, if God's really God, he would know what evidence would convince me. But <laughs> that's a kind of silly answer, really. But uh, uh-huh. no, my answer is I don't know. <laughs> Well, uh, someone I interviewed said something along those lines. It was like, um, like if God's all powerful, then you know He could take care of me without me having to believe in Him. You know, sort of like He hasn't done anything now, so why would He do anything? You know, uh-huh. if He's all powerful, He can he, he could take care of this without me. Is what the guy said. Um, I can so. I can see that. I mean, I can see how um, you know it's. Um... Let's let's assume for a minute that God does exist and He's given everyone a, a brain and, and the ability to think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've used my brain and I've come to the conclusion I don't see any evidence for God. Presumably, God doesn't have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. If, if if I've used my brain that God gave me to and I've come to that conclusion and it's not it's not out of anger, it's not out of you know spite or hatred or anything. I just that's. That's the conclusion I've come to. Then presumably that's not an issue. <laughs> if you're going to presuppose that my brain was created by God, mm-hmm. okay. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about me or any clarification um, about me, um, or if you can give me any feedback uh, to doing these in regards to being able to do it well with others. Um, you know, anything that you could share with me, I would appreciate. Um. I mean, you're setting up. So you're setting up a church in New York, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and what? So you're you're talking to atheists and so on. Is that? Are you trying to get an insight into how non-believers work? Is that your main purpose for this, or? The the main. The main purpose was to be able to converse with people who don't believe like I do, and right. hear the reasons why. And as I've done, you're number five now, uh, okay. and I've, I've started them all this week. Um, the additional purpose has been to understand how non-believers act and think and interact. Um, and that's very, um, it's been very, very helpful to see how they're thinking. One of them was challenging uh, a particular um, uh story in the Bible and he's like you guys take this at face value and you know it's very very common it's a very very famous uh, story but here's you know this is what it sounds like to us this is what's going through our mind when you guys uh-huh. are reading this passage and it, yeah. I thought to myself it was like you know wow that that's really 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 interesting so I think a lot mm-hmm. of times I might take what I believe for granted and yeah. uh and so that it's been really helpful for that to be able to know oh. how people think and, and things like that. So it'd be able for me to help me, you know, explain mm-hmm. myself and share what I believe with others and understand so, where they're coming from and what they mean when they say this. Oh. So just out of interest, how do you react to if you meet a Christian who's maybe in a more liberal church, um, who takes the Bible a bit more metaphorically rather than literally? Um, how does that how, how how do you see them, and how do you debate with them? What's how, do you proselytize to people who are more liberal Christians, if you like? I'm using the word liberal in this with a small L, of course, but um, yeah, um, I would definitely be interested in in debating and and conversing with them and letting them know why I believe what I believe, and mm-hmm. I do have a strong concern for people who do that. And basically, it's it's just, um, in fact, an atheist that I talked to uh, said. Um, that they, they were a former Christian and former pastor, in fact, and um, they got out of it and they tried doing liberal Christianity. And yeah. he said to himself, I can't do this because all they do is pick what they want and leave out what they don't want. I, I can't do that. Yeah. I either have to be all in and believe it or I'm going to be all out and not believe it. I, I've, um, heard from, I've heard from about three or four past, who people who were pastors in quite strongly Christian churches. They're probably a bit like you're like Baptist. About, are you Baptist, is it? Yes, yeah, who are, who, are, who are from that denomination and who have said that their journey, who are now atheists and their journey was through kind of more liberal churches and again the same thing, um, they realised I've either got to accept this fully or not at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, I've, heard that, I've heard that before. Yeah, and it might be also a little bit in regards to our comfort zones, but there are a lot of churches where <laughs> that's what it's all about and there are a lot of churches in this area, I would say, that lean more to that. Um, I, I, I take the Bible 
very literally, and I and um, you know some atheists would think and roll their eyes at that and think that's crazy. And I understand that. Um, mm. So it it's it's I, I don't know. To me, it it almost bothers me more when people say they're Christians and um, oh that's allegorical or oh that means this or what he really oh. means is this. It, it, that didn't really happen. That's just a picture for us to think of this. Um, mm. I, I don't read the Bible that way. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely talk to them about it and say why I think they're wrong and, and show yeah. them and, you know, I'll listen to them as much as I can. Um, and, and try to have a, you know, civil discussion. I'm, I'm not going to hate them. I don't hate uh, people because they believe things yeah. differently than me. So, um, so you don't, so I mean, things like look at a Bible verse and you wouldn't look at it in the same way as say a parable, like one of Jesus parables. Well, if it was if it was put out as a parable, then yes, I would I would I would take it yeah. literally literally as as intending to mean a parable. But then also too, from what I understand is is parables are based to a certain extent on truth. I mean, Jesus never it never says in the Bible. And one day Jesus said in a parable, and then these UFOs came in on their spaceship. You know, he never does that. He always uses no, no, that's right. yeah. He always uses yeah. humans. He always uses animals. He uses places. He uses experience. You know. He uses uh-huh. things that are real, so uh, we can get truth from those. But when he says a parable, he's telling a story that didn't happen, um, as yeah. an example to in order to convey truth. Uh-huh. Okay. So I, I would take it literally in that when it's meant to be figuratively taken. Um, and the most famous example is that God puts us under His wing or something to that effect. Well, obviously God is not a chicken. You know, God. You know, it's yeah. talking about <laughs> yeah. his. It's talking about his, you know, protection and, and his love for yeah. us. Um, but yeah. when it's written, if it, 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 if it says that this kid named David threw a, a stone at the head of a giant named Goliath, I, I believe uh-huh. that really happened. Right. And okay. uh, I don't believe that means, you know, that God will take us through it. And when we face the giants in our life, that God will provide, you know, and here are the five stones that should be in your, you know, life and how you deal with mm. the problems of your business and your bad uh, marriage. Rela- I don't, I, I don't, you know, I don't see it that way. There was a kid right. named David. He stood up. He threw a, a rock at a big giant named uh, Goliath and the giant died. Uh, so, I mean, that's that, to me, that David and Goliath story is, is- sort of believable in that there, you know there are people who are born who grow to be you know seven eight feet tall and nine feet tall and um, whatever yeah um that's sort of realistic whereas things like for me noah's ark um you know i've done back of the envelope calculations on it and there's just for the there's just no way that the ship the size it was could have could have could have taken all the animals um that's just and um, maybe that's me being very practical and scientific about it but mm-hmm. um you know, so um, that's why I that that's why I, I for me for me Noah's Ark just isn't believable. Um, uh-huh. As you mentioned earlier, you know Jesus would use parables that were believable, um, whereas for me Noah's Ark just isn't believable. Uh huh. Well, I would concur with you that there are some things in the Bible that uh, in the at the end of the day, and I don't want this to be a cop out to people, but. There are some things that I just have to take by faith that I will not yeah. understand, and um, I wasn't there. And um, uh-huh. you know, and I, if I if I believe in a supernatural being that is outside of the the restrictions of nature, by his yeah. nature being a supernatural, eternal, all knowing, all present being, then mm-hmm. he should be able to to do things that don't make sense to me, even if it's against you know um, scientific or natural. Um, uh, you know comprehension and I would yeah. you know I would illustrate it slightly that for example um, I don't have to understand everything about gravity in order for gravity to be true and uh, yeah, yeah. you know and I don't have to understand everything about physics in order for physics to be true or calculus or things like that uh-huh. um, there are people that know more than me that you know they can explain it you know in their sleep and mm. I trust them, and okay, you know, and even if oh. they can't explain it to me, it still happens. Two plus two still equals four, regardless uh-huh. if someone can explain that to me, and I just give that um, possibility to God as well. I, I just believe mm-hmm. that there's a God outside of nature, and that, you know, if he gave I- his Bible, then I I can and, and should trust it. So, but yeah, I agree, uh-huh. there's, and I, I, you know, and my wife and I were talking about that about this this morning. I will agree that there are things in the Bible that are downright foolish. And even God describes 
the preaching of you know Jesus dying on the cross foolishness and I, I agree in, in the light of us and you know natural humans there are a lot mm -hmm. of very very foolish things but that in and of itself doesn't in my mind uh, prove it to be wrong mm -hmm. so although again but that comes back to presuppositionalism because you have to presuppose there is a God to accept it I suppose <laughs> right uh, if you presuppose there's a God then yes I can see your point um, but for me, that's uh, if you're talking about physics and maths and so on, then a physicist exists and can demonstrate it to me if I so want. You know, I can talk to a physicist and he can show me why things work and so on. Whereas with a god, that that's that option is not available really. Cool. Well, I, I yeah, I, I definitely appreciate that. Did you have anything else for me or any uh, any feedback? Anything I could do to make this better? I don't know if you're you know if you're enjoying this or if you're like um, you know please hang up now. You know. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, I, I, no, I think the questions were fine. Okay. Um, um, even the one about are you angry at God was fine. <laughs> um, uh, no, yeah, and you asked, you weren't asking them in a confrontational way and things. So no, I don't, I don't see a problem with that at all. Okay, cool. If you know of anyone that you would recommend to me or recommend me to go talk to, I'd love to. You know, it'd be just like this. Hopefully, you see uh -huh. this as. Um, you know, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to do it very, very nice and courteous and polite and trying to learn. And, um, I, I might try to put this, um, I'll see how the recording worked. If it worked well, maybe put it on internet somewhere to share it. If it's okay, okay with you, uh, I'm not going to put it out there. You know, listen, as I talk to this idiot named Andrew and, and everything he says and how <laughs> it's stupid it is and wrong, I'm not gonna, I'm not going <laughs> to post it that way at all. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but just put it out there, maybe share my notes, or you know, maybe just encourage. Hey, this guy says, come talk to me, or something like that, if you don't mind. And uh, okay. just just encourage to continue the you know, conversation. I want to hear people's stories. It's neat to hear people's experiences and what they've gone through to get where they are now, and what they think of me and other people. And and um, you know, if we're all for civil debate, I'd love to hear and and want to definitely keep that going um, as much as possible. Sure. Okay. That's fine. I'll try. I'll have a think. I'll have a think and see if there's somebody that that might you might want to speak to. I might want to speak to you. Awesome. And uh, again, I, I really appreciate this opportunity. And definitely feel free. Uh, we're connected through Twitter. Feel free to um, say hello sure. sometime. And uh, you know, we'll talk again sometime. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. I hope you have a wonderful day. You too. No problem. Speak to you later. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Dera 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 dera